Hello everyone. Today we're going to work through the IXL assignment XDE. Find the number of solutions. Now, when you are solving an equation, there are three different types of solutions. The first one, which is here in green, is one solution. That is honestly what we're used to seeing, where when you solve the equation, you get one solution, aka you get one answer. So you're able to solve it through and you find in this case, X is equal to negative six. That means it's solvable. You have an answer. There is exactly one and only one solution. But sometimes when you're given an equation, there is no possible solution. That means there is no possible number in the world that you could put in for your variable and get an equation that actually works out. So if we look at this one worked out here, we have 3x plus 2 equals 3x minus 4. So when we move the variable to get the variables together, we subtract a 3x and 3x minus 3x is 0. So both of our variable terms cancel out and we're simply left with 2 equals negative 4. Well, is that a true statement? Is 2 equal to negative 4? No, it is not. Because they're not equal, that means there is no solution. And you could even try this if you wanted. You could start plugging in random numbers for x, and it would always come down to this. Your variables would zero out, and you would be left with 2 equals negative 4, and that's not a true statement, not possible. The third type of solution would be infinitely many solutions. You'll sometimes um, see this written with the infinite sign, which is down here in my bitmoji, or you could even have people call it all real numbers, A-R-N. It all means the same thing. With infinitely many solutions, let's check how this one was worked out. We were given the problem 4x minus 6 equals 4x minus 6. When you subtract the variable term over, once again, it zeroes out. 4 minus 4 is 0. But this time, you're left with negative 6 equals negative 6. That is a true statement. Because it's true, that means there are infinitely many solutions. So no matter what value you put in for x, they would all end up working and giving you this true statement. So you have an infinite number of possible solutions. So what I've just shown here through the explanation of the three solutions is one way that you can solve these problems. One method is you just go through, like shown on the board here, and you solve the equation as far as you can. And you either get one solution, you get variables that cancel out in a false statement equally no solution, or variables that cancel out in a true statement, and that's infinitely many solutions. So that's one way to solve these problems, is to just work them out. But there is another way to you know, solve them. And this may be something that some of you are able to visually see and pick up on. If so, you can use the second method. Or others are like, eh, I'm afraid I'm gonna mess that up. I'm not good at that. I'm gonna stick with this. That's totally cool. That's why there's two, two ways. You pick what works for you. So oh, the way that we can do that is you can tell that something is no solution when you have everything simplified except for moving the variable, so you've taken care of any distributive property, any combining like terms, you've simplified it, and you're now to the step where you need to move the variable. If you notice that the variable terms are the same, but your constant terms are different, it will always be no solution. Let's flip back so you can see what I'm talking about. If we look at our problem here, it's you know simplified to the point of moving the variable. And notice your variable terms are exactly the same, 3x and 3x. But your constant terms are different, 2 and negative 4. 
if you notice that at that point, you could say, hey, I know it's going to be no solution because I know those X's are going to cancel and I'm going to get two equals negative four and that's not going to work. So that's potentially a little shortcut, a second method, and you wouldn't have to finish solving it to figure out it's no solution when the variable terms are identical, but your constant terms are different. Not going to work out. All right, let's see what it would look like for infinitely many solutions. If it's infinitely many solutions, you've done your simplifying. So any distributive property is done. Any combining like terms is done. And both the variable terms are the same and the constant terms are the same. So if we look back at our example here, we can see that we have 4x minus 6 equals 4x minus 6. The two sides of our equation are identical. Both the variables are the same and the constants are the same. When this happens, you are going to get infinitely many solutions. And then last but not least, you can tell that it would be one solution when the variable terms are different and the constant terms are different. Because by the variable terms being different, that means they're not going to cancel out. They're not going to go away and equal zero, and you'll be able to keep solving, and you will get one answer. So if we flip back for one final time, once again, before you can you know, take this second method, before you can do this little shortcut, you have to have it simplified. So I'm down to that moving the variable step, and I notice that my variables are different. I have a 2x and an x, and my constants are different. I have a 1 and a minus 5. That means I'm going to get one solution. It is a solvable problem. All right. Now that we reviewed that, let's hop into IXL, and we'll do a mixture. I'll kind of show you both ways of doing it, so no matter which method you like, and maybe you know, that second method, that shortcut I shared with you, you don't quite see it yet, but you, it'll start to click after I do more examples. So I'll make sure to go through both in our practice together. All right, here we are on IXL. We are on assignment XDE, find the number of solutions. And just a quick little plug, remember guys that there is an IXL video, that's a help video that IXL itself has made. So when you're finished with this, if you want to see more examples or you still have some questions, check out that video because it can help to hear it from a different voice, to hear it from a different point of view that can, you know, sometimes make things click. All right, we want to know how many solutions does this equation have? So we have negative p plus 6 equals negative 2p. I'm first going to see if I can figure out what the answer would be using that second method, using that shortcut, but then I'll solve it all the way using that first option to prove so you guys can see both. All right, I notice that there is no simplifying that I need to do to this. There's no distributive property, no combining like terms. That means I can look at this and see whether or not it would be one, no, or infinitely many solutions. And I notice that the variable terms are the same, negative 2p, negative 2p. That means they're going to cancel out and equal zero. So it will either be no solution or infinitely many solutions. So it's not that one, because I know these are going to cancel, which means it's either no or infinite. If I look at my constant term, on the left here, let me draw my line so we can see the two sides of the equation better. On the left here, I have a plus six, and on the right, I have nothing. So my constant terms are different, meaning our answer is going to be no solution. But let's go ahead and work it out to prove that. All right, if I want to prove this, I need to get my variables by together. So we're going to move this variable by doing the inverse operation. The inverse of a negative 2p would be adding 2p to both sides. Negative 2p plus 2p is 0. So that cancels out, and we're left with 6. Negative 2p plus 2p is 0. So that cancels out, and we're left with 0. 
Is six equal to zero? No, it is not equal. That's not a true statement. Therefore, supporting the answer we already said, it is in fact no solution. Let's check this one out. So we have negative 7t plus 9t equals 2t. All right, here I can't jump straight into figuring out the solution because this isn't simplified. I have combining like terms that needs to occur. So I need to combine my like terms. I need to simplify first then I can figure out how many solutions it has. So negative 7t plus 9t would be 2t. So we have 2t equals 2t. Hmm. Well, notice that the variable terms are exactly the same. When your variable terms are the same, it could either be no solution or infinitely many, those are the two possibilities, because when the variable terms are the same, they're going to cancel out. And there is no constant term on either side. Both sides of these equ this equation is identical. We have 2t equals 2t. Both sides are identical, meaning it is going to be infinitely many, oops, solutions. All right, sorry guys, I clicked on a button and got rid of the problem, but this one right here would have been 2t equals 2t. Because it's identical, it would have been infinitely many solutions. I know that's not what's currently showing, but let's go ahead and finish it off. So even though we know the answer is infinite, if we were to solve to prove that, we want to get our variables together. We're going to subtract 2t from both sides. 2t minus 2t is 0, and 2t minus 2t is 0, meaning we're left with 0 equals 0. That's a true statement, letting us know that it is infinitely many solutions. All right, let's try this problem here. We have 9 plus 9d is equal to negative 1 plus 4d. Before we can make our choice on how many solutions, we need to make sure it's simplified. Is this, with the exception of moving the variable, is this simplified? Yep, there's no parentheses telling me to distribute. If I look at the left here, there's no like terms. If I look at the right side, there's no like terms. So I can go ahead and make my decision. When I look at the variable terms, I notice the variable terms are different. We have a 9D and a 4D, as well as your constant terms are different. We have a 9 and a negative 1. That means that we are going to be able to solve this. This is going to be one solution because since our variable terms are different, they will not cancel out and they will give us one answer. If you're able to see this, you don't have to work the problem out. You can just click one solution and move on to the next. But if you're not able to see that, there's nothing wrong with it. Let's go forth, let's solve it so we can prove that to be the case. We need to move our variable to the other side. We will subtract 4d from both sides. 9 minus 4 would be 5d. You would bring down your plus sign, bring down your 9, bring down your equal sign, bring down your negative 1, and 4d minus 4d is 0. All right, we need to solve for d. We notice that it did not get canceled out. So at this point, maybe you would be able to recognize it's one solution because you just moved your variable and it still exists. It didn't cancel out, meaning you can continue to solve. You will get one solution. And if we continue to solve, our next step would be to subtract 9 from both sides, leaving us with 5d equals negative 10. And then when we divide both sides by 5, d is equal to negative 2 
which, was, which is in fact one solution. All right, we're going to do some more together. We are going to switch now that we have worked one out of each type and proven it. We've proven why the no solution works, why the infinite solution works, why the one solution works. We've proven it in every single case. So we're going to do a couple more examples, and these videos are just going to stick with using that method to being able to, you know, hunt out and notice when an equation is going to give you which type. But before we do that, we always have to simplify. And when I look at this equation here, it is not simplified. So there's a little bit of work that we are going to have to do first. As I finish writing this out, what is it that we need to simplify? Hopefully you recognize that we need to combine like terms. There's no parentheses, no distributive property, but right here on the left, we have a like term of a negative 14 and a negative six. So remember when you're combining like terms, you're staying on the same side of the equation. So because you're staying on the same side of the equation, you're simplifying, you just do what it says and negative 14, and negative six would be negative 20 plus 13f equals 13f plus 10. Now that the next step is moving the variable, I can look to see what type of solution it's going to have. So always look at your variable terms first. Look to see whether they're the same or different. In this case, my variable terms are the same. They're both a 13f, meaning it cannot be one solution because these are going to cancel out. Now look at your constant terms. If your constant terms are the same, it'll be infinitely many. If your constant terms are different, it'll be no solution. And in this case, we see they're different, negative 20 and 10 which is not going to give us a true statement. So our answer is this solution or this equation has no solution. All right, once again, we have a problem here. As I'm writing it down, do we need to do any simplifying before we can determine how many solutions it has? Oof, that's an ugly 20. Yes, we do. Once again, we have like terms to combine. On the left here, that's simplified. But on the right, we have 10c and 4c. So 10c plus 4c would be 14c minus 20. All right, now that it's simplified and I'm down to the moving the variable, I can determine how many solutions it has. So look at that variable term. In this case, we have a variable term of 9c and 14c. Are they the same? No. When your variable terms are different, that automatically tells me that it's going to be one solution because these aren't going to cancel out. You'll be able to work through the steps and solve it. So for this problem, one solution is your answer. Okay, let's do one final problem together. As I'm writing this down, when we look at our equation here, is there any simplifying that we need to do? Yes, sirree, there is. What do we have to do this time? This time we need to distribute because we see these parentheses here. So we need to distribute. On the left, there's nothing that needs to be done. That left side is already simplified, but on the right, we're going to distribute. So negative 2 times 10k would be negative 20k, and then negative 2 times 4 would be negative or minus 8. All right, now that we're simplified, let's look to see how many solutions it has. First, check out your variable term. Are they the same? Yes, they are. So if your variable term's the same, that means it's either no solution or infinitely many solutions. 
So next up, look at your constant. Is your constant the same? Yes, it is. That means we're going to have infinitely many solutions because both sides are completely equal to each other. All right, it is your turn to try it. I know that you can do well, but of course, if you run into any questions or need some more practice together, just make sure you send an email or come to a help session. Bye.